Florida Highway Patrol is sharing some brand new information, some details that actually could help catch the person who did this. We now have a description of the vehicle that FHP thinks was involved in the hit and run. Now, do you see that camera up there on the convenience store? The convenience store owner told me that that camera captured images of a pickup truck driving through his parking lot. They don't know the color of the truck, but they do know that it had damage to the front grill, and they're hoping that that information will lead them to make an arrest. Well, Spectrum News 13's Dave DeJohn is live inside the EOC. Dave, emergency personnel will be on standby there as long as they need to be. They sure will. As a, and as a matter of fact, there has been a news alert. The EOC director just came out to us a little while ago, told us about the tornado watch, and he said he's sending out an alert to everybody in Marion County. And if anyone has these weather radios, they're going to receive that alert. And everyone is on standby. Hospitals, fire departments, EMTs, they're all on standby. And earlier today, we spoke to a family who survived a tornado hit in Marion County on a horse farm. And that is where we find Spectrum News 13's Dave DeJohn. He continues our team coverage now from there. And Dave, I heard you earlier. You were chatting with some of the folks in the crowds coming from faraway places as well. Plus, there's a rumor swirling around. Break it down. What's going on there? Julie, several residents I spoke to said that they heard that the vice president's uh, bus stop was going to be canceled for today. Now, I spoke to Village's officials. They said it is definitely straight, definitely gone for today. In fact, I'm at the front of the line right now. You can see the line starting here, the line over here. Are you all here to see uh, Mike Pence? Yeah. All right, so son, now let's go to the shot that I'll show you of the security. This is proof that it's definitely on. Watch, you're gonna see sheriff's officials. You're even gonna be seeing some secret service officials as well. As I mentioned, fire officials are really concerned that some of that hot tower might have gone down some of the sewage drains here in the area. They're also investigating that, but ultimately they tell me that it is up to the company to pay for all of the cleanup. Reporting live in Leesburg, Dave DeJohn, Spectrum News 13. Spectrum News 13's Dave DeJohn is live for us right now at Oakland Tildenville Cemetery. Dave, what's the latest there? Well, tell me, I tell you, the, the folks that have loved ones buried in the cemetery are angry because there is a home construction site right off to my right here. If you look behind me, we're about 100 yards away from the cemetery. But if we pan off just to my right over here, you can see Pulte Construction Company. They just built several townhomes, several homes in this area, and they changed the dynamics of the land. And even the city of Oakland and Pulte Construction Company is taking blame for part of this flooding. Now, if we pan back down, let's show you some of the devastation that is going on. It's flooding right now in a circular pattern. It almost looks like a pond or maybe a swimming pool. It's about a foot and a half deep in the middle. Several graves are completely submerged at this point. And right now, officials are trying to pump that water out. Earlier today, several families heard about the news. They came down here. Several were very angry and had some comments that are on tape. My son, my grandma, my uncle, my cousin, my great grandma. I have many of loved ones out here floating. My grandma is still fully underwater. You can't even see her graveyard no more. You can't see her grave. She's fully underwater. Okay, the cemetery includes a historic African American grave site, reportedly well over a hundred years old. Now, right now, engineers with Pulte Construction Company in the far, far background, about 100 yards away, are using pumps to divert the water, and they're trying to pump out as much as possible. And they're going to continue doing that through the night and into the day. Now, let's just come on back very quickly. We're going to stay here, talk to more of these relatives, find out what their thoughts are about this, and find out what indeed is happening with this construction, comp this construction company next door that is causing the flooding. Reporting live, Dave DeJohn, Spectrum News 13. Interim Chief Brett Mead comes to Mount Dora with over 30 years experience, most recently with Orange County Sheriffs. He holds a doctorate in organizational leadership and a master's degree in public administration. 
Meade says his first action is to fully assess the department. Top, bottom, sideways, every which way. Meade enters the department at a critical time. He replaces Chief Robert Bell, who abruptly retired after serving only a year in the top spot. And just last month, the city's deputy chief, Michael Fulis, was fired after allegedly violating the city's public relations policy. Fulis reportedly led the charge to oust Bell, stating that the former chief created a hostile work environment. Fractured and polarized, divided. How would you deal with that? Right now, the respect for each other is not at the level that I, I, I hope it would be. I'm going to meet with every single uh, member of our agency to discuss what they like about the agency, what we can change, but also when it comes to how do we move forward together. Now, rewind to last summer when another chief was fired, John O'Grady. The city's manager listed several reasons for O'Grady's termination, including racially insensitive remarks he was accused of making toward another Mount Dora police officer during a public fundraising event. What's your stance on race? My demand, uh, personally and professionally, is we treat everyone with respect and dignity. Perhaps an employee, an officer, um, doesn't want to go along with the program? Um, is it kind of shape up or ship out? We will uh, address that situation. We will coach that employee. We will uh, uh, try to understand what is occurring. And while Meade is focusing on the department, city officials will be focused on Meade. If selected, he'll be the third chief in just over a year. They get to see the passion they get to see the commitment in the person that will potentially be their new police chief. In Mount Dora, Dave D. John, Spectrum News 13. I don't know what I'd do if I lost her. Joan Brinkley is a responsible pet owner and had 11-year-old Audie implanted with a microchip. I would do everything I could to find her. Now, there's another way to find Rover. Finding Rover is the name of an online program being used by several animal shelters throughout the country. <laughs> Lake County Animal Shelter just started using the new technology. It's been around for a couple of years now and it's really helping people find their lost pets. Here's how it works. When a lost animal is taken to a shelter, the first thing they do is scan for a microchip implant. And no chip. After a round of shots and a gulp of medicine, a picture is taken. Hey, baby! The Finding Rover app requires a good picture of the animal's face before downloading into the website server. Now, Audi, being a German Shepherd, you might think all German Shepherds look the same, right? Well, with Finding Rover, the scanner technology can pick up the most minute changes in any dog's face. <laughs> Once the animal is scanned and processed into Finding Rover, the next step is to add information. At the Lake County Animal Shelter, this hound dog was found prowling for wild pigs in a swamp near Groveland. We put the new technology to the test and ran a search using the program's app. So it looks like we found a match. Within seconds, Finding Rover told us everything about the dog and where it's currently located. So it's free for us, it's free for the pet owner, and it's free for people who stumble across a stray animal. The only one not free, the animal. This little guy will stay put until hopefully its owner can be found or she gets adopted. In Lake County, Dave D. John, Spectrum News 13. The village's residents watching the debate closely, mostly Republicans, there are some Democrats, all of them have their eyes peeled. Trump is, uh, is really irritating him quite a bit. It all comes down to your point of view. Here in the heart of the villages, that point of view is pretty much Trump all the way. Biden said, is, oh, it's a lie, it's a lie, it's a lie, but he doesn't have good counter punches. And Trump does, and Trump has facts for the past 47 months or three years, almost four years now, that he's delivered the goods. Now, compare that with what Lake County Democrat Cassandra Brown says. We spoke with her before the debate began. I think he'll do the same name calling and, you know, talking down on, on Biden like he always does. I don't see him coming out with anything else because that's what he's been doing for the past years. You know, I don't see anything new coming out. 
The majority of Democrats opted to social distance and avoid large gatherings. In the villages, most bars were packed and opinions were mixed. I think Biden did okay. He didn't fall asleep, you know, but um, we'll see what happens when, uh, when the spin doctors come out tomorrow, tonight and tomorrow morning. So there you have it, two different styles. In the villages, they're enjoying the debate in groups without masks. In the villages, Dave DeJohn, Spectrum News 13. In front of a police memorial, the Reverend Danny McKay and his group of supporters came up with a list of reforms. They call them seven bold demands for positive changes in policing policy. These are new policing laws in honor of George Floyd. The demands include mandatory use of police body cameras, not allowing fired police officers to be rehired at other agencies, disciplinary records made public and no more chokeholds. It's beyond what needs to be done to restrain a person. It makes your stomach turn, the things that are going on. They also include making it a crime for police to stand silent when witnessing a fellow officer break the law, requiring outside investigators when an incident occurs, and required agency self-evaluations. But we still got to give an account for our actions. Do you think the current situation is policing or racism? I think it definitely, absolutely is policing. Why are we allowing police to be put in a position to do something heinous and not putting a law in place? The next step for Danny McKay and his supporters, they're taking it to the next level and talking to the politicians. And we believe that these seven things are bold, but they're also bright and right. For now, it's about getting the word out and by connecting and healing. Thank God for you. Thank you. Thank you. We're all brothers. In Lake County, Dave DeJohn, Spectrum News 13.